Hi everyone and good afternoon. In today's video I want to bring up a small point of criticism against the Myers-Briggs type indicator and that is the criticism of where we draw the line. When is an introvert too outgoing to be an introvert and when is an extrovert too shy to be an extrovert? The problem of drawing the line is a bigger problem than you might initially think. Now you might say that well obviously when a person is more extroverted than they are introverted they're extroverted and when a person is more introverted than they are extroverted <laughs> yeah, they're introverted. But the problem of uh, personality psychology and measuring and testing is how do we quantify and measure and track and objectively define this golden midpoint of, you know, when is too outgoing, too outgoing, when is too social, too social, when is too friendly, too shady, too shady. And so we struggle with defining these kind of points. Most personnel tests don't even make an effort to try to establish some kind of midline and few make an effort to keep up with statistics and to reformulate questions to establish some kind of baseline average. So statistic personality tests like the big five force and a kind of push a midline based on the average human being, the representative selective individual that happens to fall in the middle. Anyone above that level is more extroverted than average and anyone below that level is more introverted than average. And this so far goes to every single scale. The Myers-Briggs type indicator doesn't do this, and because of this, the MBTI ends up with relatively lopsided statistics. For example, it's argued that stensors occupy a majority of the world today, and that intuitives are a minority. To enforce this kind of belief, we have to work with the idea that personnel type is a yes or no question. And a lot of people, especially people that are new to the MBTI community, will hold to this belief. You either are an introvert or you're an extrovert, and there is nothing in between. Some even find the idea of an ambivert insulting. <laughs> How dare you not choose? You have to have a preference. And the truth is, yes, everyone has a preference. And even a 5% tendency to be more extroverted than introverted is still a significant preference. It might not sound like much to you, but if you're 5% more extroverted than you are introverted compared to the average person in the world, that means you spend hours and hours and hours more in your life socializing than most introverts. Basically, you're, you're more extroverted than 55% of the population, and that counts. However, there is a gradual scale. Personality type is not a yes or no dichotomy. It's not black and white, even if we'd like to believe that it is. And so we have to accept the reality that most people fall in the middle. The idea of refuting this in the first place is, is ridiculous and I'm not sure why this resistance even exists. Of course we'd like it to be that simple, of course we'd want it to be people are either one or two, nothing in between, but that's not the reality. Even Carl Jung argued that the majority of people in the world were more average, more close to the middle, that, and that only a minority had a very clear and significant preference for either introversion or extroversion. His focus was on his patients, people that struggle with a lot of different mental illnesses and disorders. He's focused on extreme variations of personality type. And that's why his psychological types, his description of the cognitive functions are so stereotypical, so extreme. He's painting a picture of his patients. He's painting a picture of the most extreme version of each cognitive function and each personality trait. But most people in the world today are not these walking stereotypes. Most people don't have an extreme compulsive desire for one specific function above all others. Most people are relatively balanced. So where do we draw the line? Where do we establish the midpoint? Well, we know objectively that there is one midpoint. We know that if uh, we take and study personality across the entire population, we'll know that there is a baseline. We just don't know where to draw it. And most experts have different opinions on where to draw the baseline. And this is also why we have such big discussions about type in the Myers-Briggs community. Everyone types differently. And when you have these people, this majority of people that are somewhere in the middle, desperate to find their personality type, eager to go and consult experts, we also have experts that have their own bias. Even if you're an expert, even if you've studied MBTI for a really long time, 
you will only have a basic idea of where the midpoint is. You won't be absolutely sure when a person is more extroverted than introverted. And it can be very hard to define if somebody is an extrovert if they happen to be close to the middle. It can take time and nuanced assessments about their cognitive functions and their thought processes, their actions over a longer span of time, their motivations, before you can finally deliver a verdict and say, yeah, okay, I believe that you have a moderately high preference for this. I believe that you are slightly more on this scale than that. And so I argue for everyone to have a degree of humility and modesty when trying to enforce type. Your opinion about what extroversion is and what introversion is might be biased by the culture you grew up with. For example, if you grew up in an extroverted culture, you might have a different standard of what extroversion is compared to a person who grew up in a relatively introverted country. And so we have different opinions on where to draw the baseline. And most of these opinions are drawn from our personal experiences, the friends in our lives. We try to kind of keep an even scale. We try to make sure that it's like fairly evenly distributed. And if we want to be serious about this, if we want to be serious about trying to understand personality and trying to help people understand their preferences, we have to also work away our bias. We want to believe that INFJs occupy only 1% of the world population, but we know that statistically that shouldn't be possible. The best way we can look at personnel type is to, instead of trying to enforce our own bias on how types are supposed to be distributed, to divide the world into roughly equal halves. In fact, most personality type groupings should be relatively similar in size. Certainly, some can be slightly bigger than others, but these kind of extremities should not exist and probably don't exist if we start tracking these things more and take a more data-driven driven approach to personality psychology. I bring up this criticism because I want to push us forward to take one more step to become a little bit more scientific and also to promote a more humble approach to MBTI. We know this is not a completely scientific model. We know it's not perfect. We know it has its flaws. And therefore, when we carry out and explain our assessments, we have to always reserve the right that we could be slightly wrong.